Overwhelmed, stressed, hopeless. That's how I felt for the last months. It's now been more than seven months since I posted my last video on YouTube and I've received hundreds of messages asking me when I will finally be back to creating videos. But I would love to tell you that this is my comeback, I'm actually here to tell you that I won't be back before the middle of the year. I didn't plan on publishing a video before the launch of my course but as I haven't really been active on any social media platform and so many of you guys seem to miss me and my videos, I decided to give you an honest update into what my life has looked like since I started working on the course. I've always been transparent on sharing with you what happens in my life Life, no matter if I reach my biggest goals or I struggle with times of adversity and I don't plan on changing that. So let me get you up to speed on what happened in the last seven months. After two full years of documenting my life and sharing my learnings on YouTube, I felt like I needed a new challenge. Something that was bigger than I've ever done before and something that wasn't related to capturing every single moment of my life. As some of you might know, I never went to university or film school and I learned everything I know through YouTube and work experience. I've always felt like there was no course or program that could teach me the skills I needed in order to succeed as a creator in the modern age of filmmaking. Everything was simply too basic, too traditional and too outdated. So after developing my skills for more than 12 years, I finally felt like I was ready to create the course that my younger self always dreamed of. Why? Because I think that storytelling and filmmaking are the two most powerful skills of the 21st century and I wanted to enable other people to express themselves and create impactful videos that can hopefully make this world a better place. So there it was, my new challenge. Nothing less than creating the best online course about storytelling and filmmaking. As you know by now, I'm not a guy who does things half-heartedly, but I'm someone who fully commits to something and gives 110%. And that's why I decided to take a break from YouTube and fully focus on the development of my course. To be honest, at that time I also felt a bit creatively burned out and I just wanted to focus a bit more on my own journey rather than capturing every single moment of my life. And that's the reason why I also don't have a lot of footage from the last seven months. But with that being said, let's now talk about what happened since I committed to this project. After living in Cape Town, South Africa for more than eight months, I decided to move to Bali in Indonesia in order to start this new chapter of my life. Unlike many of my other projects, I knew that I wouldn't be able to pull this one off just by myself. And that meant that I had to build a proper team for the first time in my life. I hired two full-time editors and I decided to fly both of them out to Bali in order to work alongside each other and strengthen our connection as a team. The first challenge I had to face was to find a good villa that would suit all of our different needs. Three bedrooms, one studio, a large living room with a big table, good Wi-Fi, a quiet environment and hopefully a pool to go for a dip. As it turned out, the owners of all places massively increased their prices in order to make up for their losses during COVID and it took me weeks of searching and scouting in order to finally find two villas next to each other that fit all of our requirements. So I signed the contract and a week later, me and my two team members Patrick and Jack moved into the new place in order to get started with the project. To be honest, the first weeks felt like a true startup. We figured out the best structures, established efficient workflows, came up with the name and the logo for the course and hired a developer for the website. I myself developed the module structure of the course and I got started on the scripts of the first lessons. All in all, the course should consist of nine different modules. One module to establish the right mindset and expectations for the course, three modules to teach everything about pre-production including storytelling, script writing and shoot organization, two modules to teach everything about production including the choice of gear and the actual shoot, another two modules to teach everything about post-production including editing and animations, and one last module to establish a framework for continuous growth after finishing the course. So basically I just wanted to cover my whole filmmaking workflow from beginning to end in order to help other people plan and execute amazing videos all by themselves. Everybody in the team got along extremely well which honestly made me super happy and on top of that I was just really excited to have other people help me realize my big vision for this course. However, after a month into the project, I started to have my first realizations. My first realization was a drastic change in my day-to-day -day work. My goal for the course was to provide as much value as possible in the shortest amount of time and therefore I decided to script most of the lessons word for word. To be honest, it was a big shift to go from scripting YouTube videos to scripting course lessons. Scripting a YouTube video feels like writing a novel but scripting a lesson feels much more like writing a scientific paper. For a YouTube video you have a lot of creative freedom to tell your story but for a lesson you have to explain a topic in the most structured and efficient way possible. And that took me quite a bit to learn. 
But besides the challenge of developing as a teacher, the much bigger challenge was that I didn't have any variety in my work and I didn't really feel rewarded for my efforts. Before the project, I used to script for a day, shoot for a day, edit the video for a few days, and after a week of hard work, I published a video on YouTube and I felt extremely rewarded by reading all of the comments of my community. And after that boost of motivation, I simply got started with the next project. But when it comes to the course, I spent weeks on weeks doing nothing else than scripting lessons. I got up, sat down at my computer and spent the rest of the day filling an empty page with thousands of words. And even after writing close to 80,000 words in the first month, I didn't feel any sense of rewards because I simply couldn't share it with anybody else. And when I finally finished the scripts of a whole module, I still couldn't really enjoy it because I already knew that I now have to record all of those lessons and that means to sit in front of a camera for at least 8 hours a day while reading a script from the teleprompter. Scripting and shooting are honestly the two most draining tasks I can think of and repeating them for so many hours every single day requires an insane amount of energy and focus. And I knew that this was going to be my life for the foreseeable future. My second realization was the challenge of leading a team. While I was already overwhelmed with my new day-to-day -day tasks, I now also had to properly onboard, manage and lead my team. And that takes a lot of time and effort. You have to establish the most efficient workflows, you have to create the right systems, you have to provide a clear direction in terms of style and quality, you have to address everyone's issues, you have to help them improve in their weaknesses, you have to keep the motivation high, and most importantly, you have to lead by example. A few weeks into the project, I really started to understand what it means to lead by example because I basically just saw how my motivation and my drive impacted the whole team. If I started working as the first one in the morning, they also started to show up earlier. If I turned my phone off to get rid of distractions, they also put more effort into focusing on their work. And if I stayed up longer to finish a lesson, they also stayed up with me in order to keep pushing on the edits. I slowly got a glimpse into what it really takes to make everyone in the team feel valued and motivated, but at the same time I also realized that leadership is a skill just like anything else and that I still had a lot of things to learn. And my third realization was the cost of having a team. While before the project I mostly worked by myself and I only had to pay my own rent and my food, I now suddenly had to pay thousands of dollars every single month in order to pay for the salaries, the villas and all the different softwares that we used for our work. This was definitely new to me and I started to get an idea of what it really feels like to build a proper business. Luckily I was still able to manage the high expenses as I continued to make money from my passive income sources like YouTube ad revenue or my online shop. So honestly, thank you to everybody who watches my videos and supports me by buying my editing assets. Without you, I honestly wouldn't be able to do any of this. The best way to describe my journey of the first month is that I stopped feeling like a creator and I started feeling like an author, a manager and an entrepreneur. I kind of enjoyed the shift in responsibilities and it felt exciting to work on something completely different, but at the same time, my work started to feel like a draining and stressful job. As I didn't get a lot of dopamine from the achievements in my work, I knew that I needed to get it from something else. And that's why I signed up for a gym and I started working out multiple times a week, I connected with other filmmakers and creators, I got into playing paddle ball, and I also did weekend trips together with my team in order to explore some places of the island. At this point, I honestly felt like I had a great balance, which ultimately made me more motivated and productive when it comes to the cause. But around three months into the project, everything started to change. So my anticipated timeline for the whole course was around three months. But as I came to realize, this was absolutely impossible. For real, it was just not doable. I needed a lot more time to script and shoot the different lessons, it took much longer to establish a solid workflow, and the team needed a lot of coaching in order to get to a level of quality that I wanted to achieve. I didn't want this course to be another cash grab where a guy just explains a few topics about filmmaking and just talks to the camera. I wanted this course to be packed with value and fun to watch. As I said, I myself learned everything from YouTube and all in all I'm an extremely visual learner. That means that I understand things a lot faster and I remember them a lot better if I actually see clips and animations of the things that are being taught. For this reason, I wanted my lessons to feel much closer to YouTube videos where people can see footage of my videos to support what I say and they can see custom made animations in order to understand more complex topics. And as you can imagine, that takes a lot more time in the editing. So after three months of hard work from both me and my team, we had to realize that we did didn't even finish the second out of nine modules. This felt extremely frustrating and I was kind of mad at myself for massively underestimating the
the scale of the project, but as I came to understand, estimating the timeline of a project like this was completely different to estimating the timeline of a YouTube video, simply because of its complexity and scale. With every new module, I realized that I needed three more lessons in order to cover all important aspects. And with every new lesson, I realized that they needed to be much longer in length in order to make everything understandable. While most of the lessons averaged to around 7,000 words or 35 minutes of video length, there were also some massive lessons that reached lengths of up to one and a half hours. And that obviously makes it really hard to predict the time that we need in order to script, shoot, and edit those lessons. So I decided to extend the timeline of the course to a total of seven months, which ultimately meant a much higher investment of time and money from my side. This wake up call of our slow progress put a lot more pressure on the project, and we all started working harder than ever before. We showed up earlier, we left later, and everybody tried to give their everything in order to push this project forward. And just when we were about to pick up and pace, the fucking unexpected happened. On one evening on my way home from friends, I had a severe motorbike accident where I crashed into another driver and slid under a truck. During the crash, my phone fell onto the street and someone else stole it, which left me with no option to call for help or get back home. Long story short, a local was kind enough to drive me back to the villa, and on the next day I found out that I broke both my wrist and my ankle. The worst thing about it was that both fractures were on the same side, which basically meant that I couldn't properly walk even with crutches. Two days after the accident, I got back to work and my team members Patrick and Jack constantly helped me to clean my wounds and bring me food. So if you guys are watching this, again, a massive thank you for the support. Five days after the accident, I actually had to leave the country as my visa expired. And as you can imagine, doing a visa run is a little more difficult if you can't properly walk. But as there was no other option than leaving the country, I hopped into a wheelchair, I flew to Singapore, I crippled through the city for a day in order to make the most of it, and then I returned back to Bali with a fresh visa. And at this point in time, the injuries of my accident really started to take a toll on both my physical and mental health. I was in constant pain, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do sports, I couldn't shower, I couldn't get myself food, I couldn't shoot, and I also couldn't really meet up with friends because I wouldn't be able to do fun stuff anyways. But still, there was one thing that I could do, and that was to script. I spent the following six weeks locked into our villa while scripting on new lessons every single day. I spent all my time working without leaving the house once because there simply wasn't anything else that I could do. This imbalance of abstaining from sports and not meeting up with friends combined with the increased time pressure of the project really started to show a few weeks after the accident. I developed really bad sleeping habits, I was sick every two weeks which meant that I could barely talk because of throat pain and I didn't share my issues with anybody else. I didn't want to talk about it with my team because I was supposed to be a strong leader, I didn't talk about it with my friends because I just felt like nobody was really close enough and I also didn't talk about it with my family as they were facing much more severe health issues and I didn't really want to burden them with my problems. To be honest, I was feeling absolutely miserable at that time but still I really tried to pull myself together every single day in order to motivate the team and push through the lessons. And after five months of working together in Bali, we all had to split ways as both Patrick and Jack moved back to their home countries in order to work remotely, and I moved to Medellin and Colombia to live there for the next six months. In Colombia, I reconnected with my close friends with who I lived in South Africa, but because of the property market and my specific studio criteria, we weren't able to find a place for all of us. So after two years of constantly living together with other people, I once again lived by myself. I got an apartment and rebuilt my studio, I established a remote workflow for the team, and I continued to script and shoot the lessons. And while I hoped for Colombia to be a fresh boost in motivation, it actually turned out to be the complete opposite. I started to feel more and more stressed as the expectations from my community, my sponsors, and myself started to increase. People were asking if I forgot about my community, sponsors wanted to work on big campaigns and realize YouTube sponsorships, and I wanted to finally meet my own deadlines. I honestly pushed as hard as I could, but I simply couldn't see myself finishing the project in a timeline of seven months. To be honest, I couldn't even see myself finishing 
reaching it in 10 months. At some point, this constant stress turned into severe anxiety, which had a real impact on my sleep and my overall well-being. I felt stressed and I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about the thousands of problems I needed to solve. Then on the next day, I couldn't really perform at my tasks because of the lack of energy. That made me feel even more stressed because I couldn't meet my deadlines. And that again held me back from getting a proper sleep. This unhealthy cycle started to repeat itself every single day and I could really feel how my battery became more and more empty. At some point I was so exhausted that I had to sleep three to four times a day in order to be able to focus on the most simple things. I got constantly sick which held me back from shooting and my overall performance was extremely low because I simply didn't have the energy to focus on my work. I think the best way to describe this whole situation is you set yourself a goal, you look to the top of the mountain, and as soon as you start climbing the mountain, you usually get closer to the top and you see the goal that you're going to reach. But with this project, it simply just feels like the mountain becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Like I'm having actual doubts if I'm able to, to pull this off. I'm scripting or shooting all the time during the week. Then on the weekends, I'm doing feedback on all of the different lessons which are being edited by my team members. And then I'm starting into the new week and I feel like, I don't know, I just, I just can't keep going. Now I'm just sitting back here, I'm staring at my screen and I can't even fucking focus to read this stuff, you know, like... <sighs> I'm just feeling fucking hopeless. I've never worked on a project that is so mentally and physically draining and I just feel like both my mind and my body are not prepared for this challenge. Yeah, that's basically it. As the end of the year approached, I realized that I seriously need to take a break in order to recharge my batteries. So I flew to Germany for Christmas and spent 10 days together with my family. After being apart from each other for more than 10 months, it was really moving to see my mom and my brother. We celebrated Christmas with my grandparents and my uncle, and after that, me, my mom and my brother spent a week in a mountain cabin in the middle of nowhere. We went for hikes in the beautiful scenery, I flew my new FPV drone along the epic ridges of the Austrian mountains, and in the evenings we cooked some nice dinner and we played some board games. Honestly, this was exactly what I needed. On most days I slept for more than 11 hours and I could really feel how my energy slowly started to recover. And then after a good week of recharging in Germany, I flew back to Colombia in order to start where I left off. Back in Medellin, I took some time to reflect on what had happened so far. At this point in time, me and my team had spent more than seven months of our devoted time and I had spent more than 100,000 euros on the development of the course. But besides the massive investment, I also reflected on the massive achievements. At this point, I had scripted more than 300,000 words, which equals to around 1,000 pages of a book. I shot more than 25 hours of finished lessons. The team edited more than 15 hours of finished lessons. They created more than 500 custom animations, and the website was as good as finished. Trust me, the website in itself is an absolute masterpiece, so thank you to our amazing developer, Eli. I knew that everyone involved in this project had already sacrificed way too much in order for me to throw the towel, and that's why I decided to make a change. I regained my hope for the project and I came to realize that there was only one way to finish this project, and that was to get my life together, prioritize my health, and establish a sustainable working routine. So that's what I did. After four months of recovery and physiotherapy, I was finally able to do sports again. So I got in contact with a personal trainer and I started going to the gym four times a week. I changed my diet to optimize my energy for work, which meant to eat no carbs during breakfast or lunch. I started talking to a psychotherapist in order to address my anxiety and stress, which gave me a lot more clarity of the problems I needed to address. I got back to meditating for 20 minutes each morning in order to let go of my anxiety and be more present during the day. And I started tracking my sleep to analyze what stages of sleep I'm lacking and how I can better recharge my batteries during the night. And this is where I am today. 
So, I am now seven and a half months into this massive project and ever since I started to prioritize my health, I finally feel like I'm getting back to my initial levels of motivation and performance. I regained my dedication for the project and right now I am working on the fifth module of the course. I can't lie, every now and then I'm still facing moments of massive stress and anxiety, but I'm really determined to get on top of both my physical health and my mental health. Without a doubt, this course is the hardest project I've ever attempted to do, but as you know, times of adversity and discomfort are the stages of our lives that have the strongest impact on our mindset, skills and character. I myself became a lot better at managing expectations and stress, I learned to take care of my health and I massively developed as a teacher and as a leader. I know that this project still has a long way to go but I also know that I'm going to make it through and that it is going to be all worth it. In order for you to take something away from my mistakes, I now want to share the three biggest takeaways of the last few months. First, create realistic plans. I myself surely didn't take enough time to properly evaluate how long this project is going to take. I thought it would take three months and now it looks like it's going to take a full year. If I would have spent a few days digging into the topic and creating a detailed plan before I got started, I would have had a much more realistic timeline. A realistic plan is essential to manage expectations and that is an extremely important factor when it comes to motivation and persistence. So here is how you can come up with more realistic plans if you're working on big projects. First, you need to break your project down into all the small steps that need to be taken. Then you need to estimate how long each of those steps is going to take. And after combining those different timeframes with each other, I recommend you to add half of it on top or even multiply it by two because unexpected problems are always going to appear. My second takeaway is to predict the sacrifices of your goals. Every goal comes with a sacrifice. If you want to learn a new skill, then you have to invest hours into consuming education content and practicing that skill. If you want to build your dream buddy, you have to go to the gym multiple times per week for a long duration of time. And if you want to create the best possible online course about storytelling and filmmaking, I guess you have to lock yourself into your apartment for a year and spend 99% of your time writing scripts and shooting lessons. The bigger the goal, the bigger the sacrifice. Well, I'm usually a guy who easily commits to big goals and figures out the rest on the way, I now learned that it is extremely important to become aware of the sacrifices you have to make, especially if your goals are really ambitious and there are other people involved. While it is easy to quit learning a new skill if you don't enjoy it, it is not that easy to drop a business if you invested thousands of dollars and there are other people who depend on you. And that's why you need to visualize what your life is going to look like before pursuing that goal and you need to seriously ask yourself whether the sacrifices are worth the outcome. And last but not least, keep up your good habits. I must have worked for so many years on establishing good habits like doing sports, eating healthy foods, going for walks outside or meditating every morning. But when you start to feel stressed and your work suddenly requires a lot more time than usual, it is extremely easy to neglect those important habits and get drawn into a vicious cycle that has a negative impact on both your physical and mental health. For me, my motorbike accident was definitely the trigger to get sucked into work without making any space for recovery. You can pull all-nighters and work every single weekend if your goal only takes a few weeks to achieve. But if you want to perform at 100% for a long period of time, then there is no way around taking the necessary time to recover and re recharge your batteries. Trust me, if you don't take care of your body and your mind, then you won't be able to achieve ambitious goals and it is going to have a severe impact on your performance and your overall life. So make sure to build those healthy habits and much more importantly, make sure to keep them up forever. All right, so that's basically everything that I wanted to share. I thought a lot about whether or not to create this video because first of all, I was already extremely busy with all of the other stuff going on. And second, I wasn't really sure if I'm already ready to share this stage of my life. But as I mentioned in the beginning, I always want to be transparent with you guys and I want to share the lows as well as the highs. I hope that this video could help you understand why I haven't been back to creating videos and why this channel is also going to be quiet for the months to come. As I mentioned in the beginning, my goal is nothing less than creating the best possible online course about storytelling and filmmaking and that's why I don't want to sacrifice the quality of the learning experience by rushing the project within a specific time frame. To give you at least some feeling for when the course is going to be available, I'm hoping to launch it in the beginning of the third quarter of this year. But again, I don't want to nail myself on a specific date. I'm honestly sorry for giving you such a wrong expectation of how long this course and this overall YouTube break is going to take, but I hope that this video could give you a better understanding of why it happened and also why I haven't been really active on any social media platform. 
I want you to know that I appreciate the absolute shit out of every single person who patiently waits for me to finish the course and return to YouTube and I can assure you that it is going to be worth the wait. You can't imagine how much I miss creating YouTube videos but you also can't imagine how many lives this course is going to change. And that's why I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking around and I'm going to see you on the other side.